Good morning. Hey, everybody on Facebook. I got you guys here this morning. Good to see you. Hi, everybody. Good morning. All morning. right. It is Monday. Another new week, Monday Morning Mojo. How are we doing this morning? I had a little technical difficulty, but we're good now. We're on. And I'm so glad to see you guys. Really, really appreciate you getting up and starting your week with me. I'm ready to go. I've got my mojo juice. <laughs> I've got my, um, my mojo smoothie, I'm going to call it. So, uh, How many calories is that now? Come on, if you're doing... <laughs> Calories. So I appreciate that question because I am I am focused on my health and, and releasing weight and I am back with Weight Watchers. I'm a frequent flyer. Uh, oh. This is actually very low in calories. Um, so this is an orange, a banana, a really big handful of spinach, uh, a teaspoon of honey, some ginger, some turmeric, some cinnamon, and that's it and water. So no protein delicious. powder or almond milk or anything like that. So, so this will, you know, I'll have more breakfast. This is probably really more for the immunity and the, the vitamin C and stuff that's in the fruit. So good morning, Rebecca Kane is up early. I'm so happy to see your shining face. So you do know I have this job so that I don't get up early, right? I had yeah. <laughs> my own hours, but no, I'm always up this early. It's just my bedtime. <laughs> I love it. Well, you look great with your flowers behind you. You're like, I know I'm starting to change everything over to spring because I cannot take it anymore. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I uh, started moving everything around. Yeah, I feel like spring is is trying to make its way in. So, yes, um, all right. Well, listen. Yesterday. What's that? I saw cardinals yesterday in my front yard. So, means it's time. Good. Good. All right, so um, again, good morning to everyone who's with me on Zoom. I appreciate having the company here because it's always good for the energy. And I love all of you on Facebook who watch that way too. So I, um, I will do my best to try to follow along. If you have questions or comments on Facebook, just put them in the chat or in the comments of, of the video that's streaming right now. So we've been talking a lot over the, the last several weeks about our goals, our action plans, mindset, this morning, um, you know, we're still going to talk about mindset because that's everything, right? You can have the best laid out plans and your thoughts, if your thoughts are not in alignment, if your thoughts are bringing you back down, if your thoughts are not going to inspire you to continue to think big, then, you know, you're going to have a struggle with hitting your goals. And so that's what I want to talk to you about this morning is thinking big. And we're going to we're going to take it right out of the millionaire real estate agent book. Now, my disclaimer to you this morning, before you all click off, uh, whether or not you're in real estate, you're going to get a lot out of this conversation because this has nothing to do with real estate and everything to do with the way you think. And whether you're at Keller Williams or not, it, it's not important. This is about really looking at your motivation, examining your why, and getting clear about what that means to propel you forward for your goals. So um, when I'm gonna teach to you right out of the book, uh, pretty much, but um, if you're following along or wanna know what page I'm on, it starts on page 67, where Gary Keller talks about thinking like a million or thinking a million. And basically what he is saying to us in, in the Millionaire Real Estate Agent book is that it's not even about the money right? It's not about whether your goal is to earn a million dollars or not, um, or, or even what your relationship is with money. That may be a conversation we have at another time, but it's really about examining how you think. And there is a distinct way that, that, that big achievers think. There is a clear difference in their approach to life, in their approach to setting goals. And that's the opportunity, you know, for all of us right now is to look at and examine how do we think. So um, if you're taking notes, I want you to write this down, how you think matters or how I think matters. That's what I would like you to write in your notes, how I think matters. Um, and so we're gonna look at uh, a couple of, of habits and beliefs that separate those big thinkers from others so that you can really look at that honestly and, and make some assessments this morning. So thinking a million is an attempt to help you capture not only the mindset 
an attitude of the millionaire real estate agent uh, or just the millionaire producer or the millionaire business owner, right? Uh, but it's also the focus. So write down the word focus. So Gary says, through experience, top producers have learned to differentiate between what is truly important, what can be delegated, and what can be simply ignored. So what is truly important? What can you delegate? What is not necessary for you to put your time and attention to, right? So it's kind of like sorting that out. And one of the biggest challenges we have and we all face this, guys, this is not just for some of us, is overcoming the incredible urge to leapfrog the work to learn phase and go straight to the work to earn phase. So let me explain what that means. So work to learn versus work to earn. So it's about the mindset around realizing that the time you put into your personal development, the time you put into understanding systems and models, the time you put into networking and masterminding with other top professionals and successful people, uh, the, the podcasts you listen to, the books that you read, all of that should have purpose and line up with what you need to hit your goals. And so I think some of us, it feels counterintuitive. It feels like, oh my gosh, I shouldn't be doing all this. I shouldn't be taking the time to, to read this book or listen to this podcast because I should be out there doing something. Well, there has to be a, a percentage of your time that you spend working to learn because the information, the resources that you will pull from that, it sharpens all the tools in your toolbox, right? There's this old saying sharpens the saw. And so that's how you can become more strategic in the pursuit of your goals, whatever those goals might be, right? So I, I was honest with you this morning, I'm, I'm working to you know release weight and get healthier. And so there's a part of my time I, I need to spend on researching uh, different recipes or meal planning or uh, things around how the body works when it's looking to, you know, release weight and re uh, release stress. If I don't spend a little time looking into those things and I'm just relying on my own knowledge or information, I may not have the most strategic approach. I may not have the most successful approach. Um, so it's important that, you know, you look at not just spending time on earning, but spending time on learning. So that's one thing we're going to take away from, from our conversation this morning. So in the book, Gary talks about the nine ways the millionaire real estate agent thinks. So I just want to put real estate in parentheses, you insert whatever is significant to you, right? But at the end of the day, uh, this is really a conversation around mindset and the nine perspectives that anyone would need to have in order to think big and hit big goals. So the first thing that we're going to talk about this morning is huge, and that is think powered by a big why. Think powered by a big why. So your why is basically your motivation, your purpose, your reason for doing whatever it is that you're doing. And the bigger it is, the more powerful it becomes. And that creates this, this anchoring into your, the pursuit of your goals. Because let's face it, being entrepreneurial especially, I know a lot of us, uh, a lot of you who follow Mojo are entrepreneurial in many ways. Uh, and even if you do work for someone or a company, uh, if you're in a leadership position and, or a director's position, that's somewhat entrepreneurial too. And so or the mindset around it is entrepreneurial. And so when we're looking to, you know, grow a big business, when we're looking to pursue these goals that we have, it's not easy every day. How many of you can relate to that? If you, if you're with me, yeah, put your hand up. If you're on Facebook, you know, put that in the comments, like I get that. And so it's hard. It can be hard. It's challenging. It can be an uphill battle. Yes, it's absolutely worth it. But on some days we can feel overwhelmed by it. And so our big why is the anchor that keeps us focused and keeps us in the trenches to do what we're doing. And so um, again, I'm just gonna read from the book here on page 72. Above all else, we've discovered that one thing all high achievers have in common is they are working for a big why. The big why is about having a purpose, a mission or a need 
that in turn gives you focus. So your big why is providing you with purpose, a mission, or a need, and that in turn gives you focus. High achievers always have a big why, powering their actions. So the big why is the fuel in your tank. So a good example of how this works, a big why, it, and, and uh, you tell me if you uh, have had this experience. How about the day or two before vacation? How efficient are you at your job, at your, at your business? Are you not a powerhouse looking to plow through all the activities that need to get done? Are you not someone who is, you know, like working hard to, to, to complete things in a big way, right? Because your big why is you want to leave everything taken care of and go on your vacation, and enjoy yourself, right? So that's one example of the big why. Um, and so this is really important because the bigger your why, write this down, the bigger your why, the bigger your focus and energy needs to be. The bigger your why, the bigger your focus and energy has to be. Right, because because small thoughts bring small actions. So that's why we have to go big on this. So imagine if you could live every day out with that kind of purpose. Imagine if you could really just put that kind of super high octane fuel in your tank. Now, what are some things that will motivate you? What are some things that will, actually, I'm gonna correct myself. It's so much bigger than motivation. It's purpose, right? Because motivation is kind of fleeting. It can come and it can go. It's purpose. So what will inspire you? What will drive you? What will keep you moving forward? What are those big whys? What is the reason for you to do whatever it is that you're doing, okay? And so that's what I wanna give you a moment to think about right now. Right now, just on the piece of paper you have in front of you, just jot some things that come to mind. What is your purpose for doing what you do? What is your big why? And yes, of course, behind that, within that, are the things that motivate you. So, you know, for some people it's providing, um, well, okay, so, so for some people it starts with income, right? There's a goal around uh, income goal. Yet, why is that important to you? And why is that significant? What is the purpose for that? What is it, what is it about the money? What would you like the money to do for you? So I want you to keep peeling it back. And um, oftentimes when I've worked with people in coaching, right? Uh, we've had these conversations where I just keep asking them, why is that important? And why is that important? And why is that important? And we peel it all the way back to something that's very emotional, right? Oftentimes, you know, I always have tissues on my desk because oftentimes, um, you know, we can get really connected to something on such a deep level, right? And so what is that for you? And chances are you're coming up with more than one thing. So just write down whatever comes to mind. And I'm going to I'm going to encourage you to think about this in ways that is it is bigger than money. Okay? Not that you should apologize for your motivation being around income or a certain goal around income because that is important. But I want you to pull it back even further. And I want you to ask yourself those questions. Why is it important? What is it that the money will do for you for your family? Is it about a legacy you want to build and create? Is it about moving past the few, you know, what you've had in your past, right? Is it about creating a bigger life than what you've been used to? And why is that important to you? For some people, their big why is more around self-worth. It's about showing that I can do this, that I have the ability to figure it out and build and create great things in my business. So that's something to go back to. And if I can help with that, if there's anything I can do to help you peel it back, uh, just reach out. But this is really a big, uh, important factor is the why. Okay, number two, think big goals and big models. So now you have this big why, you have these really big thoughts and you're connected to the emotions that show up with them. And, and now it's time to create big goals so that you can get there. And in order for you to get there and the, and the bigger the goals are, then you have to realize that the models and systems that you follow have to also be big. 
and they have to be proven to work. So again, if we're always left to our own devices, are we missing out on the opportunity to do something smarter, faster, and more effective? So what are the systems available to you? What are the models available to you? What research do you need to go and do so that you can find the things that will help you really get where you need to be and to then achieve the results that you're looking for and probably continue to scale up from there? So, you know, at Keller Williams, that's one of the things that our company is really built on systems and models. Now, again, if you're not in real estate, or you're not with Keller Williams, there is opportunity to look for where you can connect to those systems and models. So big goals, let's just start with that now. Let's go back to the big goals. Big goals are really about the power of big habits. We've talked about this in Mojo before too. The bigger the goal, the bigger the habits have to be because you have to examine, are your habits supporting you or are they actually sabotaging you? So habits that will help you stay focused on achievement are going to be crucial. Now, the big models, that again is having a tried and true system to follow and, and for you to be able to execute steps that will get you closer to your goal. Uh, in big models, it's also about looking for leverage, how to do what you need to do faster and easier. Okay, so those are some things to look for. Uh, and I would also just say around, around the habits and the models to definitely uh, focus on what are your habits, systems, and models around time, managing time, calendar blocking, time blocking, you know, that's gonna be important too. All right, who's with me? Are you getting anything good out of this conversation? Okay, we got one person, yay. <laughs> now, let's go to number three, think possibilities. So big achievers, big achievers, big thinkers, they're always thinking about possibility. It's never about can I do it? It's about how will I do it? Okay, so it's about thinking and possibilities. So we've talked about this here so many times. It's believing you can do it. You have to, even if you're not sure how, good morning, even if you're not sure how, it's about the mindset around, I can figure it out. I will find the tools, the resources, the people. I will learn what I have to learn in order to figure it out. That is how big achievers think. They think in terms of possibilities. It's not can I, it's how will I. So Gary, I love this on page 82 in the Millionaire Real Estate Agent book. And I'm going to tell you, you take the real estate jargon out of this book. It's the blueprint for building any sustainable, profitable business. So regardless of the industry you're in, you may want to get the book. Um, he says that on um, page 82, there are three stages of possibility thinking. I love this. Number one, nothing is possible. Number two, something is possible. And number three, anything is possible. So it is sometimes human for us to go through those three stages, right? So even the big thinkers may have a moment of doubt, but where do they get to? They get quickly to anything is possible. So possibility thinking. Okay, let's go on to the next one. These are the nine ways, <clears throat> excuse me, the nine ways a millionaire, I'm gonna say, Millionaire professional thinks. Number four, think action. It is about action, guys. Once we get into the right mindset, once we understand what our big why is, once we start to create the big goals, we identify the systems and the models, we now have to get to work. It's always about action because that's the only thing that brings your results. You cannot only think your way to success. You cannot only think your way to success. You have to take action. So now it's time to get to work. Here's where, I mean, as logical as that sounds, here is where a lot of people get stuck. This is where people get stuck. You know, it's about knowing that your activities every day have to be consistent. Your activities have to line up right? Those actions have to line up with the goals that you want to accomplish. 
And a lot of times, I think for some people, they spend a lot of their energy and time in the thinking process, right? And we have to pull the ripcord and go. And so it is about taking action. So that is number four. Number five, think without fear. So I had a uh, business meeting last night with a good friend of mine. Uh, we're going to be looking to get into some, some uh, exciting stuff together. And um, that's one of the things we talked about is we have to think without fear. So as we were talking about some investments we want to do together, you know, it, it, yeah, we have to be smart. We have to be strategic. Actually, we went through the whole process I'm explaining this morning to you. And then we got to this part of the conversation where we said, you know, there comes a point when you, when you think you've done all the work and you have it laid out and you have the right action plan, you know what your goal is and, and it's time to get into it. Now we just have to do it without fear because what is fear? It's false evidence appearing real. And so oftentimes our fear will just paralyze us. And now I think big thinkers and big achievers they are not immune to fear because they're human. But yet when it shows up, they process it very quickly. That's what separates them from other people. So big achievers, they still feel the fear, but they process through it very quickly. And so we have to learn how to think bigger and think without fear because the fear will hold us back. So that can be a big obstacle to achieving your big goals. Um, Gary talks about this for two pages in the book. That's, I think, the other um, nine steps don't have as much uh, territory in the book as, as fear does, because I think that this is the one thing that will stunt someone's actions. Um, but here's, here's the other part of this conversation or, or the other side of the coin on fear. This doesn't mean that we don't expect a misstep or even a failure or a setback. So failure... Uh, if I was to add number 10 to this list, I would say get comfortable with failure, right? Because failure is a part of success. You're going to make a mistake. There's going to be a setback. Even the best laid out plans, you can find that it may go a little sideways. So what is the key? To bring all of this together and to think in terms of possibilities, to think in terms of action, to be learning based, to look at what happened, what can I learn from this? How can I make adjustments going forward? What are the new opportunities because of what just happened, right? So I think it's important to say that fearing mistakes or failure is just a waste of time because that's where you're gonna learn the most. If, if the road to your goal was always easy, would you learn anything? If the road to your goals was without challenge or, or trials or some type of you know, uh, struggle, how would you know what you could handle? How would you get smarter? So I just wanna make sure that you realize that that's part of your success journey. Number six, think progress. And uh, it's not about perfection, right? It's not about not failing, it's about moving forward and making progress. So it's having the knowledge that your breakthrough, your next big opportunity is going to come through all of this effort and perseverance. So think progress takes your thinking a step further because it's also going to propel you into thinking very strategically because you, you wanna win the game right? We're going to think in terms of progress. So the millionaire real estate agent does not see consequences in terms of positive or negative. That's huge too. So I'm going to say that again. This mindset is about not seeing consequences as positive or negative. They just are consequences. So if something has an outcome, whether it is positive or negative, there's always an opportunity to come from that. Do you get that? That's why you can't say it's good or bad. It just is. It's just an opportunity to analyze and figure out what is this teaching me? What is this showing me? How can I do this differently? How can I do this better the next time? What do I have to learn 
about myself? What do I have to learn maybe in terms of a skill set so that I'm better prepared for this next time? See, it's, it's all opportunity. It's all opportunity. So number seven, I know I'm packing a lot in 30 minutes today, but you guys are doing great. Number seven, think competitively and strategically. You want to play to win the game. You want to play to win the game. So if we're going to sit down and play Monopoly, uh, you might sit down and have fun. I might sit down to win the game. Are we going to play very differently? So I want to ask you this question, write this down. This is a great journal prompt. If you guys like to journal or just want to have a couple questions to really, you know, expand your thinking. Um, here's your question. Am I playing in my business today to win? Or am I just playing not to lose? Because people who play not to lose tend to play it really safe. But people who play to win, they're playing full on, hard. They're pushing, they're figuring it out as they go. They're, they're pushing the fear aside because their goal is to win. So how are you playing? How are you playing in your business, in your life? Are you playing to win? Or are you just playing it safe because you don't want to lose? Are you thinking big? Are you thinking creatively? Are you thinking out of the box? Right? Because sometimes the creativity needs to show up in order for us to get to the next level too. Number eight, think standards. So what that means is if you plan to be successful, um, you have to look at what are the standards that are important to you as a professional? What are the standards you want to work and live by? We've talked a lot about beliefs on Mojo before, right? So what are your standards? And if you're someone who's really looking to grow a business through people, right, by, by bringing people into your world, by recruiting or building a team or hiring, then this is really important because you want to hire people to a set of standards, but not only for, for you, but for them. You want to find like-minded people. You want to find people that you can build a culture with, right? And so this is really, really important. And last, number nine is think service, think service. So every top producer, every top professional, every high achiever, whether they articulate this or not, this is how they're living their legacy and how they're living through their business opportunities mm -hmm. because they're thinking of how do I provide service? How do I come from contribution, right? How do I provide great, products, great service to my customers? How do I provide a great environment, great customer experience? How do I provide a great culture of growth and opportunity for the people who work with me, right? So service is big and it's the heart of your business. Regardless of the industry you're in, it's the heart of your business. And so in that, we have to identify what is the purpose of your business and I think top producers understand that very clearly. They actually take the time to create purpose statements, mission statements, value proposition. That's another thing that I would write down that's huge, right? What is your value proposition? What is the value that you're bringing? Why should someone want to do business with you? And then in that conversation around standard standards is that concept of fiduciary you know there there are people who are going to be spending money with you or through you so what is your responsibility to them around that how do you create um, a culture and a business model where it's very clear that their best interest is your priority right so I know I packed a lot into this conversation here and, and just like in any mojo the, or any coaching session, by the way, if you work with a coach, 
the, the work really happens between the coaching sessions. So if you want to take the or get the most out of this conversation, um, you might want to get the book, but I would also go back through the list and ask yourself, how do I, how do I implement this into my business? How do I implement this into my life? Because you could take any of your goals and create a process around these nine ways that high achievers think is really what it comes down to. And, you know, Zig Ziglar has a famous quote, and I'm going to paraphrase, but it's basically when you help enough people get what they need, you get what you want in return. And so that was one of the first things I really connected to that was one of the first probably motivational quotes I think I ever heard uh, when I was starting my career in sales at 19, I was, or 18, I was 18, uh, going to work for a pharmaceutical company, working in sales, right? Which was like really young. And um, I had to learn pretty quickly and uh, I do not have a college degree. So I had to learn you know, all the things that I've been learning uh, through life and uh, through studying and reading and watching other people. And I think that it is about being really super clear that the way you think is going to be the game changer for you, right? So ask yourself some of these questions and does it apply to other areas of your life? It, it will, it'll apply to any area of your life. So um, while we still have another minute or two, tell me, was this helpful? Did you find this to be a great conversation? What did you pull out of this? Or are there any questions? And again, I love that you guys are here on Zoom because I can actually have a conversation with you. I thought it was helpful, but I missed the first three steps. Oh, okay. So the first three, think with a big why. Think powered by a big why. Number two, think big goals and big models. And number three is to think with possibility, think in terms of possibility. Okay. And of course, I'll stream um, the recording of this session back on the Mojo page. You can also go to my YouTube page uh, and find all the recordings from every Mojo session. So if you miss any part of this morning, you can always play it back. YouTube page, okay. Yes, uh, Anna Gibbs on YouTube, all the Mojo sessions are there. And if you subscribe to my channel, then you'll get all the stuff that I post every time I have new content. Okay. Yeah. Great. This was wonderful. Another mo a kick off Monday. So thank you very Hi. much. And, and I've been referring you to people and they're thanking me. So hopefully they, oh. they plug in and listen and they hear you, you know. Great. Thank you. That's got me. Like, got me coming. That? <laughs> she, she got, got me you coming? coming? She's the one that got me coming. Awesome. Yeah, listen, if you're getting value out of this, I can't, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you all being here and listening to it. Um, I do it for you. I do it for me too. I get a lot out of it. I learn new things every time I, I teach or coach. And, um, you know, please share it. Please share the Facebook group. Please share the Zoom link. Um, encourage people to be a part of the community. And um, I, I think that's an awesome thing. My goal is to have a thousand members by the time we're here a year, and that'll be at the end of May. So if you can share this, that would be great. And you know what's significant about that number? It's not so I can just say I have a thousand people in the group. It's because we have a chance to inspire that many people to think differently. And that's what it's really about. Any other thoughts or questions before we sign off for today? As always, thinking big is really, really, really what it is. And I can tell you, Anna has coached me through this <laughs> many, 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 many times. And it definitely works. Your cells totally eavesdrop on your thoughts, right? Oh, I love that. Your cells ease, eavesdrop on your thoughts, which means what you're thinking just shows up all over in your world, in your body. Yeah, that's a powerful statement. Totally. And Rebecca, you've grown tremendously in your business over the last couple of years. Yep, I came thinking, I just want to make, you know, a modest salary. And now I'm making three times as much as that just because I believe, right? That's awesome. I literally just, I believe. And I help more people than I ever thought I could. Yeah. And the money, again, it's, it's, it's not about the attachment to a dollar amount. If you focus on doing all the right things, and if you're focused on these big goals and, and really identifying your big why, the money will come. Yep. I promise you the money will come. The opportunities will show up. People will be literally knocking on your door. You know, we talked about this last week, kind of the law of attraction. It's about getting in alignment with thinking, doing, and saying 
all the things that line up with the goals you say you have, right? And to say that that dream really can become a goal if I create structure around it, if I create an action plan around it, I don't have to say one day, I don't have to say it would be nice. I can stop saying I wish. Like if it's really there for you, if it's in your heart, put it into an actionable plan. If I can help you with that, reach out. I mean, that's one of the things coaching can do. So I'm happy to help. All right, you guys have an awesome day and a great week, a powerful week. And, um, you know, if you're thinking all the things we talked about today, just share your thoughts on the Mojo page too. That's a great place for us to build a community of people sharing ideas, sharing encouragement. You know, what you're doing is not insignificant. You putting something on the page like, um, so I heard you know, about thinking big. And I sat down this morning and I got pen and paper and I created a goal by you putting something like that on the Facebook page, you can inspire someone else to do the same thing. So you have the power to change a life. And I want to create a community page that that does just that and celebrates each other and, and just, you know, has us focusing on on powerful uh, opportunities. So thank you for being a blessing in my life. Have a great day. And I'll talk to you soon. Enjoy the week. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye bye.